This is renovating a vintage horizontal twin cylinder model steam engine and it's part 6. I must put a caution on the beginning of this episode. This is very very boring. So if you suffer from depression or anything related to depression I suggest you turn off now. Currently I am removing the crosshead guides. It's very important to make sure that the crosshead guides are placed in a position on the bench in the correct order to go back from whence they came. I'm using the base of the engine which is a very convenient place to put them. And they are of course in the right order. In the last episode I degreased the engine thoroughly using some white spirit. People keep asking me what white spirit is. In England it's called white spirit or turpentine substitute. In other countries I'm really not sure what it's called so the best thing to do is not to ask me the question. Just google white spirit and there's lots of information about it on there. Just for a bit of light relief and excitement, this is a tin of Brasso, and I'm using the Brasso to clean up the cylinder block. It's not doing a very good job though because the stains are quite bad on this cylinder block. All along with this engine I've been saying I do not want it to look like a new engine. It's going to be a vast improvement on what it was when I got it to repair. But it's not going to look like a new engine, so I'm not going to go over the top and make everything shine. The patina, or patina, depending on how you pronounce it, is very important on an engine of this type. I do not want it to look like a new engine, because it really is very old. So it looks like Brasso's not going to touch this staining on the front of the cover, so I'm going to try another method. I saw some interesting sandpaper, if there is such a thing, at a local DIY store. It was foam back sandpaper, and it came in a packet with three pieces all of different grades. This is the fine grade, and I find it really good for doing things like this. Alternatively, I could use one of the finer grades of Scotch Brite, the scouring pad type cleaners. I need to go and buy some more Scotch Brite because I've run out of it. On some engines, I would use cellulose thinners to completely remove the paint, but this paint is actually pretty good. It's not flaking or chipped, it's okay. So I've given it a quick rub down with some fine sandpaper and here I'm removing the sanding dust. And once the dust is removed it's ready for painting. The sanding will give a good key for the new paint. If you do not know what cellulose thinners is, there's a lot of information about it on Google. For this job I'm using Precision Paints NER Loco Green. NER stands for North Eastern Railway and it's the colour they used to paint North Eastern Railway railway engines. It's really good paint is this, I either use this or Humbrol and nothing else really. I do realise that this is a video clip of me stirring a pot of paint. This is intentional to prepare you for what's yet to come. So as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have any kind of an illness that involves depression or not being happy, it's probably time to turn off now. It is of course very important to stir the paint for at least this length of time. Always read the instructions on the tin and the health and safety warnings. And now, once the paint has been mixed thoroughly and the engine has been fully degreased, it's time to paint the engine. And to avoid any probability of an entire generation of steam enthusiasts jumping off the nearest cliff, I've speeded this up considerably. This is really going fast. Nice even coating is what's required and you have to be very careful not to get any runs in the paint. Personally, I find painting possibly the most boring thing in the world. So now I think it's time to end it all. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>